So Valerie, when you think of a capacitor, what do you think of? Can you draw it? Yep. Wonderful. Valerie drew a very common capacitor on the board here, and we're going to talk about how to model it a little bit more accurately using the parasitic model of a capacitance. So what does it mean, and then what does the model look like? All right, so this is an electrolytic capacitor, and it looks like this, it's like a little can, and it has this little, um, little we'll have a little cross at the top. This is actually a little bit of a release valve because these can explode, and they may explode if you put them the wrong way. What do I mean by that? These, they're polarized, so you have to put them, the positive and negative charge on them correctly. If you do it backwards, it can explode. So keep track of that if you're using these type of uh, canned electrolytic capacitor. So you know, there's usually two different leads here. The longer one is usually, I think the convention is positive, and the shorter one is a negative. You can also double check by looking, usually on the can, there's like a little negative label, like a strip here, and that's closer to the negative one. So even if they kind of get cut or something, you can still look for that. So we have an electrolytic capacitor, and this is commonly used at the output of a DC-DC converter. So we do see them commonly used. You would say, let's model this. Well, obviously I just draw a capacitor. So let's start here. I have a capacitor here. If we want to model a capacitor, obviously we just draw this and we have our capacitance value here and we're done. Not quite. This is the idealized version of a capacitor. But when we look at a real capacitor, there is more to it. There are some things that we call parasitics, like a parasite. So things that take away from the ideal version of this capacitor. So let's look at each part individually. Inside of here is actually two plates of material, and in between is an electrolytic material. And it's actually like very long, and then they wrap it around, and that's what actually forms this canister. That is then connected to these leads. Let's start with the leads, because this is more physical. So the leads here, whenever you have a wire, this wire lead is going to have some resistance. So in reality, there's a little bit of resistance here. We could model that. And on the other one, there will also be some resistance. When we're modeling that in the parasitic model, we would combine those together. So you would put some sort of resistor here. And you could call this the R series. We commonly call this ESR. So equivalent series resistor. So many people will just say ESR. All right, we have a wire. A wire always comes with some inductance. You can't get away from it. It just, any wire has inductance. So we also have some small inductance here. And they would be on both sides. So if we want to model that, we would also have to put that into our model. So because they would be in series, we would model them just as a series equivalent. So we would have some inductance here. And we can call this L series. There's another, another part. If you take a capacitor like this, you can try this in the laboratory. Uh, if you charge this up, so you, you charge it up to whatever voltage, and then you unplug it, so maybe you put it in a breadboard and then you charge it up and you unplug it, let it sit for a little while, and then you remeasure the voltage, so you need the voltage before you unplugged it, and then you let it sit, no connection, just by itself, and then you measure it again, you will see that the voltage has decreased, but there's nowhere, nowhere for the charge to go, but the voltage has decreased. This is a sign of parallel resistance. So inside, inside of the body of this, the plates are not perfectly isolated. There is going to be some charge that will go from one side to the other. And so that is modeled with this parallel resistance. 
So even if we completely disconnect it, say we put a voltage source here and then we disconnect it, there's nowhere for the current to flow, right? But in reality, the current can still, still flow, so the charge that was on these plates can still flow through this parallel resistance and will discharge. So this would be, I would say, the full parasitic model that we would use in a power electronic sense. However, we often simplify this model when we use it, for example, in looking at DC-DC converters. And usually the most prominent one, especially when we're looking at electrolytic capacitors, the different types of capacitors will have different values. But in electrolytic capacitors, this ESR, the equivalent series resistance, tends to be a little larger. And so often we will model as just these two components. So I would say this is the common model. And then this whole thing would be the parasitic model. When will this be important? When we're actually implementing a real system, we are going to see that the waveforms, the ideal waveforms, are not going to come out. They're always going to have some non-idealities. Those stem from these parts of this parasitic model. So the series resistance, this ESR, is very common because it will affect the output ripple of your DC-DC converter. It's going to add up to a little bit additional ripple. So that value we model commonly because we do see that when we in experiment. And also when you're designing the control, this ESR value will actually affect the small signal model of your plant. And so this ESR is very commonly included in that because it does have a more significant effect. The other ones you can, of course, model, but they tend to be less prominent when we're doing our analysis. In summary, we have a real capacitor. When we want to model that, we have to go beyond the ideal capacitor model and add a few more components. We need to take account for the equivalent series resistance, the RS, here, and that's commonly used in a model for DC-DC converters. If we want to go into the full parasitic model, we also should include the parallel resistance, which is also referred to as a leakage because it's the charge leaking out of the capacitor, and the series inductance, which would affect the dynamics. And these all stem from the physical models of the actual capacitor. So you can use this now to model more realistic capacitors.